Oh, Chris, are you sure you it's, load, it's loading up now? Yep. Sure you don't want to cancel? Yeah, I was going to say, why don't you just do this show on your own? Like, you need us sitting here, right? All we're doing is taking up bandwidth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm like, Indy? What Indy? There was Indy this weekend? Are you looking for comprehensive yeah. solutions for your performance and automotive shoot. needs? Straight Line Performance and Automotive is a full-service auto repair shop specializing in race car fabrication, electrical design, chassis setup, and alignment. Located in Hamden, Connecticut, they also specialize in aftermarket high-performance and chassis upgrades. Be sure to look them up on Facebook at www.facebook.com backslash straightline, S-T-R number 8, L-I-N-E, performance, ampersand, automotive, or give them a call at 203-415-5316. Welcome, racers and fans, to the Racers News Network Live, presented by Straight Line Performance and Automotive and Scotty Wheels Racing. Your hosts, Chris and Pete, bring you the latest news and interviews in the world of sportsman drag racing, including bracket racing, association races, outlaw, and no time events. We are live every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Take it away, boys. Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Racers News Network Live. Uh, happy Labor Day weekend, everybody. Or as it probably should start being referred to, happy U.S. Nationals weekend. Unless you're in the right lane, then not so hot. Uh-oh. Oh, yeah. The, oh, people are losing their minds over the right lane this weekend, and India was not good, I guess. But uh, we have all the results from the JEGS All-Stars. We have all the results from the U.S. Nationals. We have the Hemi Shootout results. And uh, joining us, as always, to my left is the man, Pete Sanka. Oh, that's me. Uh, the, uh, yeah, you're on the left. <laughs> Duran and, uh, is the man. So you gotta be and, of course, about Dave, <laughs> making up the, uh, the uh, three-thirds of the Brady Bunch screen here is uh Jaron Suttles looking way Suttles. more professional than us hello Jaron yeah, good. good to be back it's always so, a pleasure uh, to be back with you guys Jaron you did something a little bit different this weekend yeah I went went fishing no I went uh <laughs> I went eight mile racing in a door car how about that slammed some doors this weekend uh, I feel like it was the perfect diet plan, though, because I lost about 10 pounds sweating with uh, no roll-down windows, like saying, Pete, I don't know how you do it in the summertime. <laughs> what was the weather like down there? It was about 93. With me losing 10 pounds sweating, you can't even see it, so it don't matter. <laughs> I'm, feeling like I'm, I'm feeling like I'm a little slimmer today. So <laughs> You're looking good, Jaron. You're looking good. <laughs> Had a pretty good weekend. It was two ten grinders at Bradenton and uh, lost fourth round on Saturday and went to the semis yesterday. And, uh, yeah, good weekend. Good warm up for this weekend's double Lucas Oil race in Phoenix, Arizona. Did you race both ten grinders? Yes, sir. Yep, fourth round on Saturday. What did, and, what did you do in the uh, other race? I lost fourth fourth round on on the first race on Saturday and semi final in, in the second. That's a hell of an outing. How many rounds to win it? Uh, it was an eight-round race. Decent car count. Yeah, yeah, it was pretty good. Yeah, and it was the first time I ever even seen the car was uh, Friday. So nice, nice. It was so nice. Yeah, it was. It, it was pretty cool to, to to slam some doors. I hadn't driven, I haven't raced a door car in almost ten years, or I think it was over ten years. So it was pretty cool. And, uh, That's why you're our hero, buddy. That's why we keep you around. <laughs> <laughs> You're not just another pretty face. <laughs> I try, I try. <laughs> well, how about Indy this week? So, so we got Indy. Um, I got to be honest with you. I didn't do a lot of tuning in. I had a really crazy weekend. Uh, I don't know. I heard that one of the lanes was a little suspect. Um, I know that Erica Enders won. I know that uh, the two forces qualified number one, respectively, in Funny Car and Top Fuel. Um, I know that we had two winners out of Division One 
for the Jegs race. I know Jackie Frick won the main race in top alcohol dragster. Uh, I guess maybe I do know a little more than I thought. <laughs> well, I think the results part of this program is over with. Yeah, yeah. So thanks for tuning in. We'll see you later. <laughs> see you guys. <laughs> All right. We're going to start with uh, the dot 90 stuff because that's what I do. And Jerron's going to interrupt me. Go ahead, Jerron. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say before we start. So, Chris started with the right lane blues and before i know we're going to talk about that later but i just wanted to say before everybody starts hounding you know uh keister is going to call me captain nhra or whatever yeah. <laughs> yeah. i'm pretty sure tim wilkerson won the race in the right lane and, and ran low for the, the round i mean the race so did he really to, to you know they they definitely and they I, they also worked on that lane from about 5 a.m to 8 a.m it was still bad, but they did stop and fix it. But no excuses, just uh, kudos so to them. Let me, let me ask you a question. Let's touch on something real quick before we get started. You obviously go to a hell of a lot more national events than uh, Chris and I combined. Uh, you probably do more in one year than we have in our life. What makes one lane? I mean, I've, I've been to national events. I've been up in the suite. Uh, at English Town with a by view, and I watched them prep for hours because it was fascinating at one point. Um, and I never see them treat one lane any differently than the other. Obviously, the procedure is the same. What the hell makes one lane go so sour, and why can't they bring it back? You know, that's a that's a very good question, and I, you know, I'm sure they know. I think it has to do just you know my opinion with. I think there there isn't a difference in prep, but I think you know you got phys physically guys scraping, right. and you still have the human uh, you know aspect of it of maybe not scraping as deep as it needed to go, yeah, maybe scraping too deep, you know, um, and so you know you know typically they they prep at night after the race is over they go out and scrape, well you know hot tired whatever again not making excuses but this is maybe. Right something that that was the last lane that they prepped that night, got tired, you know, or was like, hey, you know, we'll finish that lane in the morning, come in, you know, Pete hasn't had his coffee, Chris is a little grumpy, don't get it scraped as well. You know, that sounds like an everyday occurrence around here, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so that, I mean, I'm only, uh, I wasn't there, unfortunately, this year, but that's, you know, that's pretty much the only thing it can be, you know, I'm uh, again, I'm only speculating, but that's, that's I mean, what, in my opinion, let, let's say hypothetically NHRA was going to get lazy, all right, and just not put 100% effort into prepping the track, which I'm not saying they ever do that, but I'm just saying hypothetically. You know damn well if they were going to get lazy, they sure as hell wouldn't get lazy at Indy. Exactly. Right? I mean, at the U.S. National. So to me – it's not a matter of not being prepared, not having the I mean, it, it, This is 500, right? This is our Super Bowl. Yeah. So I can't believe for a second that if it was something that in any way could be controlled, that they wouldn't have done it because it's in there. Yeah. Well, now, what the I'm, hell caused it? I mean, it's crazy yeah. to me. There's there's only one other thing that I can that I can uh, comment on that. I'm not going to blame it on this, but it could definitely be a partial aspect of it. Russell Prater has been the head safety safari, you know, track guy, I believe since 2016. Yep. And he came in from IHRI with a wealth of knowledge, one of the best, you know, track specialists there are. Right. He just recently left after Pomona. So could whoever, I don't, I'm not sure who, you know, took his spot, who replaced him. Was it, possibly their first time in Indy, you know, you know, right. I, I, don't, I don't know, but like I said, I can only speculate, but I know that is, a, a, there was a personnel change high up, you know, as far as track prep goes. So maybe that was something. I, but, I would, I was wondering if like maybe the way that the sun came up over the grandstands or something, if the right lane baked more than the left or so, I don't know. It's just, it's crazy. Yeah, man. You know, you know, you, you kind of think about all, all those things. I just, I, I kind of would count them out just because they're not that far apart. You right. know, you know, so I, I could, you know, let's think 
I, I don't know. I don't believe they got a bunch of rain before. They may have. Uh, again, I didn't didn't go this year, so I don't. I didn't keep up on the weather coming in. Yeah, but even if you get rain, it rains on both lanes. Right. Exactly. Well, I'm just, you know, I'm just so I mean, in, in the cleanup and the drying procedure and the prep, you have to assume is the same on both lanes. I just, it's crazy. Yeah. I, you know. Yeah, it's it's de it definitely didn't didn't make much sense. I know. Now I don't know how early they started, but I saw a bunch of the super super comp guys were complaining um, about their more their Sunday morning run was in the right lane. All the high horsepower cars didn't get down or had struggled to get down. So, and I can tell you, last year for me, we ran an early round on Sunday. It was seven a.m. and I've got a pretty fast super comp car, and I almost did get down myself. Like I was a smarter driver would have lifted, right. But it's windy and I didn't, but I, I struggled. So, and I was in the left lane. Uh, so I don't, you know, I'm not saying that had anything to do with anything, but right. I just, you know, you just wonder if they're starting too early. If, you know, there's, there's just a multitude of things that it could be. Yeah. Um, but again, they, they did fix it. Now, unfortunately, you got racers that lost when they didn't fix it. So right. you, know, you, you have that unfortunate aspect of it, but. Uh, they did give them a good racetrack later on in the, in, in, after that first round. The other issue you have, too, is as soon as the rumor starts about him being no good, especially with the pros, every pro, everyone that qualified in the top half of the field, naturally is going to take the left lane. So it's going to make it look even – it's going to exaggerate it, make it look even worse. But Absolutely. Yeah, you know, cars that, that if there was nothing wrong, may have smoked the tires – Sure. You're now getting blamed on, well, it's a bad lane, you know. Right. Or well, now number 16 is going to race number one. Right. So they're going to be all jacked up. You know, right? So, but is, is it the lane's fault or is it number 16 trying to run with number one? Uh, you know, yeah. who knows? Yeah, Chris, I saw you sticking your hand up. I did. For I mean, you got to take it for whatever it's worth because you read it online. A lot of people did mention the rain. And they thought there was a lot more water that affected the right hand side. So now that yeah. would make sense to me. Right. 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 If you have weepers coming up and you have more in one lane than the other, then right. Yeah. Well, that's what I was gonna say. So on the on the right hand side of the track is the circle track. Uh, and basically it's the backstretch runs right up to the grandstands of the drag strip. So it creates kind of a valley right there that possibly could be a situation where something, you know, in, in the right lane was to do. Um, that's why I, when I was starting out about the rain, that's what I was going to say that there's, it possibly could have had something like that, sure, but sure. I don't know how much it rained. Excellent. Excellent. All right. So now that we've cured all the world's problems, Absolutely. we will, uh, we'll start with dot 90 at our put, Super Bowl race. I have my, I have my Rob, I hope Keister's watching. This is, this is my, uh, my captain NHRA uh, Cape. Cape. <laughs> he, he is watching. He said, oh, thanks for calling me out. <laughs> Rob, we only do it because we care. If we didn't like you, we wouldn't even mention your name. <laughs> or the Mid-Atlantic.90 series that ran this past weekend at Maple Grove. Oh, we didn't get any results from that. No, maybe that. Yeah. I, I assume he's still. They they had rain issues and mist right. and fog and everything. I ended up. Right, right. They, I know they canceled running on Sunday. The the Mid Atlantic Series did, and then right. they pretty much surrendered on Saturday afternoon evening because of right, the mist right. and the fog. So, um, if you are, which I believe you are. Uh, private message me whatever results you want me to announce. And when we're done with the indie wrap up, I'll announce it for you. Okay, here we go. Uh, Super Cop 890 at our Super Bowl of the races, the U.S. Nationals in Indy. Nick Eisenhower defeats Mike. We just went over this. Jerusik. Jerusik. I got it. Jerusic. Sorry, Mike. Um, Let's see, Mike red lighted by tooth out, uh, and Nick scored his first Wally. Man, imagine getting your first Wally at the big go at Indy, huh? That's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I, I know a guy that almost did that. Yeah. 
<laughs> you don't have any wallies though? No. Nothing, huh? Wow, I wish I knew. I would have sent you home with one of my four back there. <laughs> I have I have a, a Bob Glidden amount of best of train wallies. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> but no. Um, so we'll, we'll come back. We'll, let's go back to Supercar. We'll come back to my uh, sorrows later. You but, got it. You got it. <laughs> Nick, the, the cool thing about Nick is he is, I believe, the younger brother of Devin Eisenhower, who was a former Supergas World Champion, a former Indy winner himself. And oh, very uh, nice. yeah, Nick, uh, the, the car that Nick was driving, I'm pretty sure, is the one they bought at the end of last year. And uh, so he has he's only been in the car about a year. So that's that's pretty cool. He yep. took out some hitters, Rusty Cook, Kyle Fickler, Tony Elrod, Len Ellison. Like, those are heavy, heavy names in Super Cup, and he, he mowed through the field. I think it's safe to assume that regardless what class you run, when you're running at Indy, if you're going to hold the trophy up, you're going to have to take out some big guns to get it. Absolutely. No doubt about that. No doubt. That is, that is a tough, tough race there. On to the 990 guys, and I could already know what you're going to talk about uh, after we're done with this caption. Uh, Edmund Richardson defeats Tim Gillespie. Uh, also a red light start for Tim. Uh, Edmund Richardson, what can we say? 49th national event Wally. Uh, I don't remember the number that we reported uh, I believe he was bumping on 50 divisional wallies. Uh, he's going to be pretty damn close to having 100 of them going around his mantle in his house. Uh, I know that last week you had mentioned something about the fact that uh, he had a little bit of a dry spell and he just came out with a new car. Uh, he scored a win last week, and uh, it looks like he doesn't have the new car blues, does he? Not for sure, yeah. That was a brand new car brought out at Bowling Green. Won there and then took it to the big go and whooped him there. And, you know, Tim Gillespie is, is a phenomenal driver himself. I think he put up a perfect pack last year at Indy in Supergas and was three and four pack a few times at, at this race. So if there was anyone that could, that could handle Edmund, it, w- it was, it was uh, Gillespie. But Edmund, just like you said, it, you, you can't say enough about the guy. He uh he didn't really have a drive spell. He just didn't race NHRA. Didn't race, right, right, right. right. For a, a good many years, they him and his boys focused on bracket racing, and uh, not sure what made him come back. I guess he just wanted to do something different again. But uh, just, just know he could still do it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, proved to everybody that he's pretty <laughs> much the, the goat of sportsman racing for sure. Like there's there's no like Luke Luke Bogack, he's probably the the closest person to him, but uh, Edmund's still way out ahead of everybody. It's, Bars. Yeah, I mean, he's in everything stock, super stock, super gas, super count, like you name it. He's turned the wind line on multiple, multiple times. Yeah, no doubt. What do you got, Chris? Uh, last weekend at Bowling Green was his 50th Lucas Oil Drag Racing Series Wally. And he got 49 national event walls. Did you imagine? So That's got to be like, honey, hammer on this Wally here. It'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry about it. I can't find yeah. a hammer. <laughs> yeah, so he's got he's got 50 little wallies and 49 big ones. That's that's astronomical. That's and that's and you, you got to remember some. We're not counting the trophies that you get when you win a championship because I guarantee he's got a couple of them too. Yeah, yeah, he's definitely got some world championships for sure in Super Comp and uh, even in Super Star. Uh, pretty sure Super Street and Stock. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, he's wow. he's. He's pretty, pretty much the celebrated uh, superstar of sports and NHRA sports and racing. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about that. So congratulations to him and Tim for the runner-up finish. Uh, moving on to Super Street, which obviously was contested in Indy. Otherwise, I wouldn't say we're moving on to Super Street. Uh, <laughs> our friends, the 1090 guys, Larry Payton in a Chevy S10. Uh, runs a 10.95 with an eight to defeat Trevor Larson's Chevy Cooper at 10.96 with a three. Uh, both guys running over 140 miles an hour in the final, uh, and he also wins his first national event wallet. Yeah, Larry Padden, I believe. Uh, I think he's a he's a Division One car, I believe, isn't he? Uh, I honestly do not know. I. Okay. Have yeah. never heard of him. 
Uh, I but he is. Names. He is. He is, and he's also a member of the Mid Atlantic Dot Ninety Association. Oh no, kid! What is a uh, S Ten? He is an S Ten. That up. That, you know, that's I'm so bad with names that that's like, oh, oh yeah, that's with the yellow S Ten. You know. Yeah. No idea what his name is. You can be relative for all I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've seen Larry. Larry runs out. Uh, he comes out to uh, the Division Seven every once in a while. I've seen him at, at the Winter Nationals. Uh, I think he was there last year, and uh, but he does he does a little bit of traveling. But uh, Trevor Larson is also a West Coast guy, former Super Cup, Jags All Star winner Super Cup. So uh, Larry Larry beat a, a tough guy for his first U.S. National win. That's again, you win your first. I, I have to tell you that if I I have not been fortunate enough to win a national event, um, half the reason is because we barely get one in Division One, and the other sure. half the reason is because I suck. But if I ever won my first national event, Wally, at Indy, I would drive my car trailer. I don't even think I would strap it down. I would put it in park right off into the sunset and call it a career. And that's no joke. I mean, what, what else could you do to top it? Especially in Super Shoot. We can't run for a, a championship. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He's Larry. So Larry holds the distinction of being only the second person to ever win the U.S. Nationals in Super Street because it's only Super the second time ever been contested. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I, I just, I mean, what else could you ask for? If you run Super Street, that's, that's it. I mean, that's all there is. A divisional, would you give up a divisional championship for an Indy National? Ooh. Yeah. You think so? Uh, yeah, I God, I don't know. That's the that's a tough one. I'd I'd have to think I, about that. The here's here's the reason I would. I I've I've been through the indie experience and the competition is extremely tough, but the spread over days is psychologically tough. Right. So I think I I really feel like it's probably tougher to win any than, than a division championship or I, I feel like you you have a better chance of winning a division championship than you, than you do Ender Indy just because you can try every year right and you can have, have some good years but Indy you've got to have a good weekend you right know? right right and that, that's that's tough you know yep. what do you got Chris um so from Rob Keister about uh Larry's truck that he races yes. um the truck he ran was the one that he built for his son to drive. Uh, his son, unfortunately, passed away a few years ago in a motorcycle accident. Uh, Larry was going to retire from racing, but decided that his son wouldn't want that. And uh, so he started racing the truck. I like it. And what a tribute that is. Get some uh, good. Get some that's, that's, that's cool. Good for him. That's, uh, man, that makes the story even that much better. Thanks for Absolutely. sharing that with us, Rob. We appreciate it. Good stuff. Good stuff. He's Rob, uh, Rob, Rob, uh, Chris, I see a poll coming. What would you rather have? Uh, Indy win or a divisional championship? Now, with this poll, you've got to specify that no bracket racers talk about this poll or give their, their <laughs> two cents. Oh boy! Yeah, then you're gonna get me in trouble. No, I know. Don't, don't do get that. the notebook out, Pete. Well, you know, and that's even what. What would you rather have a track championship, or would you rather win the bracket finals and go off to Pomona? Right. right. So that's kind of a long All right. Yeah. Right. I mean, do you want to do you want to grind it up so now we could have a poll for our bracket racer friendly hands too? See that? All right. So. Let me just make sure I got this clear. Would you rather have a divisional championship or a U.S. Nationals win? U.S. Nationals win. I can yep. see people are probably already going to be posting before I even get a chance to put this up. <laughs> that's good. That means we got more than two people watching, so that's good. Yeah. <laughs> all right, then how? All right, for the brackets. A broad, for the brackets, would you rather win a track? Championship. Because when you win the bracket final, you get to go compete out in Pokemon. Yeah. 
right. And then by doing this, by the, yep, a bracket champ, or uh, a track championship, or a bracket finals win. And this will also be good for us because we'll be able to tell how many people are watching our bracket racers, our national and divisional race racers. Although we could be doing this offline too instead of while we're live, but yeah, either way. <laughs> Thanks like for said, we know probably people are probably going to comment. And that's all right. I had to write it down anyways because the brain don't work all, right all <laughs> yeah, the time. Yeah. And then if you asked me tomorrow, I'd be like, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yep. All right, Chris, on to you for the rest of Indy. All right. So the rest of the results from the 67th annual U.S. Nationals held at Lucas Oil Drag Racing Park Series thing. Uh <laughs> I'm what? so used to, uh, I, I, all right, let me explain my stupidity on that one, okay? No, oh, please do. <laughs> when I was a kid, it was IRP. And it's always going to be IRP. Good. What's IRP? In Indianapolis in, in, in Raceway in Park. Oh, I got you. It's this just like, as lame as a comparison as this is, it's not Hollywood Studios at Disney World to me. It's MGM. Okay. I know. Chris, you don't know, much, you don't know how much that warms my heart. I'm such a Disney fan. It'll always be MGM Studios. You and me, Flora. Let's hug. Let's hug it out. There Virtual we go. hug. There we go. You guys, if you want to be left alone, let me know. I'm not, it's not that bad yet. Okay. All right. It all started with a mouse. That's right. <laughs> there you go, boy. Seven but, Seas Lagoon. The only reason that it's there is because they had to dredge that to fill in the for the utilidors underneath and bring the Magic Kingdom up. He knows his Disney history. I like it. I like wow. it. Dude, I'm retired. I watch a hell of a lot of TV now. So hey, look, can we have a Disney episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All Disney all the time. <laughs> and next week's guest is going to be Mickey Mouse. Yeah. No, oh, Goofy. Goofy. Would, yeah. No, we well, got that. Right. Oh, I see what you did there. <laughs> Goofy, Goofy's already here. You got Co covering the heads up portion of the show. <laughs> yep. Donald Duck. You know why? Because he's quacked. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Let's do this so we can get the hell out of here, will you please? All right. So, again, from the 67th annual U.S. Nationals, top fuel, Steve Torrance defeated Brittany Forrest. Torrance, for as far as that cheap shot he took last year, he the, the guy's on a tear. It's, he's got to, like, almost fall off the side of the planet for him to screw it up now. He's been on a tear for, like, three years. Yeah. yeah. I mean, really, just, like, putting a hurting on the top fuel yeah. drivers field. But you know, I feel like I feel like this. I, he's definitely been on a tear. He's doing exceptionally well. I feel like the rest of the field has paid that much too much attention and are making mistakes. Um, yeah, that's, when, that's when, what happens when you're on top, right? Right, exactly. He's he's vulnerable, or the races he's been vulnerable. They don't take advantage of, uh, you know. And and I feel like you know they you know if, if I see it. Why don't these crew chiefs see it? You know, but I'm just being a, a hard, a hard butt. But you know, the 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 entire Coletta camp is you know got a great team, but they they've struggled, struggled, struggled. Leah Pruitt, you know, hot and cold, hot and cold. You know, Clay doesn't have the resources anymore. You know, it's it's just like wow. I, I think everybody is capable. But they've just figured out a, a formula and it's working and every and they're making everybody else yeah blunder basically. The, the problem is when you when you want to run next to someone like him, you either have to swing for the fences and hope you find them, or you have to say, I'm gonna make it from A to B and hope he makes a mistake. Right. Yeah. The problem I'm assuming, because obviously I'm no top fuel crew chief, but I would imagine that it's very hard for a lot of crew chiefs to say, we're just going to go A to B and hope he makes a mistake. Cause that's got to be a little bit of an ego thing. I would assume. For sure. Um, force. We know that force could run with him. Uh, she beyond a shadow of a doubt for as many wins as he has, she has number one qualifiers. 
Uh, yeah. So we know she can do it. So I, I don't really put her in that category. Uh, 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 grubby, I should say. I wouldn't put him in that category. But for the rest of the field, I mean, it's, it's a bad thing. Just get there and hope that he misses something. We missed a little bit. I think you froze up a little bit, but I think everybody got got the gist. Um, right, right. But you're right, though. That you know, Rebnik is, you know, one of the best out there. Like I said, seven or eight uh, number one qualifying uh, spots in a row. Right. You know, they've struggled on race day, obviously. And you know, lots of lots of what I noticed, you know, being a super cop slash bracket racer. I said it. Um, <laughs> Eighth mile to boot in a dark car. <laughs> then, yeah. Woo. Yeah. Then, a lot of the drivers have left a lot on the table on the starting line. You know, we watch Mike Salinas, you know, at, in, at Epping. He was late, outran him, right. but lost. You know, uh, you know, then, you know, Clay stepped up to the plate at Brainerd and Torn stepped up to the plate with him. You know, it's, it, you know, right. but there's so many times that, you know, you know, first or second round when he's kind of vulnerable, he's, you know, the other team just aren't taking advantage of it on the starting line. And, and you know, I just wonder why there's not more emphasis on that. You know, why is Mike Salinas consistently not cutting lights? You know, right. with Alan Johnson on board, is, you know, is Alan paying so much attention to make it horsepower that they forget it's a Christmas tree in the middle of the track? You know, how, right. you know how, right, right. how can this program consistently, you know, lose on the starting line? When, well, I, know, I hate to say it because I'm a humongous force fan. And I also hate to say it because I've never hit the gas pedal in one of these cars. So I have no business commenting on it. But Brittany's lights are god awful. Yeah. And they're, that's, god, they're god awful. That's what I'm saying. I was, I was coming back to her, you know, with yeah. back in her. That's been her Achilles heel this year. Is she's yep. been getting left? Off, you know, pass it, that's been her Achilles heel since the beginning of her career. Yeah, yeah. Um, she'll she'll come out with some good ones, but I I venture to say I don't know if anyone has lost on uh, more whole shot losses than her uh, because they make so much power, and we know she could run with the big dogs, but yeah. man, it. Just, you know, and, and I'm a force fan. I root for her every time. Um, but that that is definitely her Achilles heel. You're absolutely right. Chris is uh tapping Chris, the Chris, All right. Just Brittany Forrest, round one, 70. Brittany Forrest, round two, 101. Brittany Forrest, round three, a 90. Brittany Forrest, round four, a 95. What was Torrance in the final? 75. All right. So did she out did, did, did she outrun him? He got her on the on the top end by fourth out. So guess what? All shot loss. Yeah. Again. Yeah. You know, and that's and, yeah. and the thing, and you and you hit the nail on the head because 75 is very vulnerable. Yeah, you know, and uh, if you, I say it's very vulnerable. Like I know what it's like because I drive one of the cars. But if you go, you know, Doug, Doug Coletta, one of the best levers in the group, right? Um, uh, Langdon, Sean Langdon, one of the best. Yeah, one of the best in the group. I mean, the the list goes on and on. Uh, Proc, the little bit of racing that he's done, nasty. Um, you gotta. I, I agree with you 100%. You got to figure out why you're leaving so much on the table. If yep. she can get her lights down to consistent 50s and 60s, yeah. all of a she, sudden, it's a, it's a whole different All world, of a sudden, he, he looks right. Right. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and that's, that's why I say what it bothers me that you have all this preparation, all the funding, all the you know, planning, the logistics, all of it. But no one's paying attention to the reaction times, you know, in any of these camps, you know, pretty much except, you know, and it has to go back, in my opinion, to the roots of where these drivers came from. You know, I've preached that from day one that the best drivers in all of racing, bracket race, right? You know, 
they're not A to B drivers. So many of the, the pros are just A to B drivers, get it from the start line to the finish line. And, you know, th- so I feel like if a crew chief tells them to, they need to cut a light, mm. they didn't concentrate on that so much that they can't, they're not going to drive the car. Where Sean, it's second nature. He's going to go up there and, and stab the tree because right. he's going to do that his entire career. Uh, so the other thing, too, is, is now with drivers, their main job is driving. Right, they're not ripping the cylinder. And again, I, it's I'm not talking about everyone, but for the majority sure. of, them, they're not pulling out spark plugs. They're not changing rod bearings. Right, they're not ripping off cylinder heads or rebuilding blowers. They're probably mixing their own fuel, and they're driving. Yep. So go hit the practice tree, <laughs> like until your foot falls off, and yeah. then use your other foot. Yeah. 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 You know. Yeah. You know. It's just. I just, uh, you know, we'll talk about it in another episode, but I had a long conversation with Tony Stewart about that. And, you know, we talked about him starting in Top Dragster Super right. Cup to get that Friday night street stock, you know. Yeah. Well, that's, you put it in terms that he can relate to. Yeah, without a doubt. And when, when, he, when we talked about that, he's like, yeah, you're absolutely right. You know, you know, instead of just going right to Top Fuel, right to, you know, whatever, and not learning how to race so to speak you know right, right. Uh, i feel like so many so many of the racers the, the professionals even in pro stock you know in funny car uh in alcohol just didn't really learn how to race you know and, and i'm not talking bad about it I'm, i'd love to be where they're at uh but i feel and like you know, listen, yeah if i was 18 years old and someone said you wanted to drive top fuel i wouldn't say no no i gotta start in super comp first screw exactly. that <laughs> but sure. The fact but, remains that you can tell when people do it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, Clay, an old top dragster, quick rod racer, you know, right. and he's a very good driver. You know, if he can get some, some better funding, you know, I think, uh, you know, because obviously Clover is, you know, worked with Don, with Don Perdome. You know, sure. he's been around the sport for a long time and, and has some championships under his belt with, with, with the Snake, with Larry Dixon, uh, you know, and even with Clay on – on, on the I tried Bill Werner days with uh, you know Lehman. Uh, yeah, if, if he can get some funding, he can he can leave on them and, and give Torrance you know a go. Yeah, I mean there was when you mentioned Top Fuel and IHRA. If Clay doesn't come to your mind first, you haven't been paying attention. Absolutely, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was, he was, I mean, he still holds the, the record for the fastest run, quarter mile run over there, most wins, most championships, uh, you know, obviously the, the level of competition wasn't at the, you know, on par with, with NHRA, but it's still top fuel. There's still, you know, sure. a lot of things that can go wrong. There's so many variables with, with a top fuel car. I mean, right. you know, our car, there's so many variables that'll, you know, make us, that could, that are, have to do with us winning or losing. Top fuel is just magn- magnified a thousand yeah. times. Yeah. You know, and even though it's, it's, even though the performance numbers weren't the same on the IHRA side, all, all the competitors were still playing with the same rules. So sure. half a second slower, half a second faster. Who cares? You still yeah. all have the same rules that you got to try and make your combo yeah. the fastest. So and he dominated. He dominated for sure. You know, and and honestly, you know, one of the things I I feel like is a for Steve Torrance is Bobby Lagana. So, you know, again, you may not know or people may not know, but that's where they pretty much started. You know, Bobby ran top fuel and I tried for a long time. Sure. Dom did also. And I feel like those guys, along with Clover, you know, they didn't have the track prep that NHRA had. They had older tracks. They had older surfaces. Right. They learned how to race when the conditions were horrible. Right. You know, and I feel like, you know, not that, again, I'm not talking bad about any of the other crew chiefs that may have never run that, but you know, it, it's, it's anybody, it's a, you know, it's a, a, a house painter that's, you know, had to paint with bad brushes until he got, you know, enough money to get right. the brushes. And, oh, you, you got know, a spray gun, gun. yeah. Right. Those, those people tend to end up being better than someone who always, who had good, great, you know, stuff all the time. So, you know, that's, that's definitely, I, I believe, a big uh, factor in Torrance's is, uh, success is that, you know, Bobby's there, Bobby and Dom, um, you know, although Dom may not be, you know, working on the car, you know, he was, he was, he's still in there giving him input as far as right. tuning. And, uh, you know, th- those two learned a lot on, on the IHRA side. Yeah. 
Yep, yep. All right, All so right. that took 15 minutes just to get through Top Fuel Dragster. <laughs> Move on to Funny Car. <laughs> All right, Funny Car. Tim Wilkerson over Ron Caps. Uh, 91 to a 94. All right, so here we are talking about slacking on reaction time, and no one in the professional class has knocked it out of the park, that's for sure. <laughs> yeah. That was that was definitely good to see Wilkerson get a win. I don't think he's twenty sixteen. I think it was, and uh, you know he's been he, he's he's one of the guys that are still doing it with one car. You know, yeah. no no team information, no sharing and stuff, and you know still does it out of his own shop. You know, he's not in Brownsburg, and you know doesn't have the, the superpowers around him. But it's so uh, it's definitely good to see him uh, perform well, and you know after getting. Nailed in the rear end by uh, Cruz a few races ago, you know, yeah, uh, right. to bounce back and uh, you know win Indy. That's you just you, you can't. It, it doesn't get any better. That's that's what what Indy's all about is is grit deep down. You know, pulling out your best when you when you have to and uh, and to beat Ron Caps in the final. I mean, dude, Caps is yeah, always. How, on. how would you like to end a five year drought with an Indy win? Yeah, exactly. Against Caps. Good yeah. stuff. All right, so we didn't spend 15 minutes on that. Okay, that's okay. Sorry, Tim. There's, Sorry, there's, Tim. There's Tim still hope. <laughs> Congratulations, Tim. We'll see you later. <laughs> Moving along. Nothing to see here. <laughs> All right. Pro Stock, Erica Enders over Kyle Koretsky. Now, the interesting thing was she was in the right-hand lane, the, the voodoo lane that we were talking about earlier. Yeah. I watched an overhead video today and it looked like Koretsky was staged crooked and was just doing the doing the dance down the left hand lane. I mean he stayed with her, but it it just it could have been the camera angle. I don't know. It just looked like he was, you know, doing well, a dance it, to character. To bring it like back to funny car lane. for a second, uh Wilkinson oh. also won in the voodoo lane, right? Right, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 Yeah, you know, as as much as we're 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 happy about Erica winning, or you know, anybody can be happy. You just gotta feel for Kyle. I think that's three or four finals now, and his first number one qualifying spot. He's been number one on Friday a, a number of times this year. Yeah, has a good car, but man, just cannot break through for that that first win. And uh, he he's gonna get it. I mean, he's obviously got KB power and and a uh, good car, but. His his race day uh, black cat is just he just keeps running running across the track in front of him. Yeah, yeah, he'll get it though. And you know what? The the couple of losses when he finally knocks it down, and it'll probably be this year. Uh, when he knocks it down, it'll just make it that much sweeter. For sure. Yeah. I, if I if I can make if I'll make a prediction, I think I think he'll win Pomona. I think he's going to end the season winning winning Pomona. That's that's my twenty twenty one my one twenty twenty one prediction. That's the only thing I'm predicting. Uh, Chris, if you can, what were the lights on the pro stock uh, final? Actually, she got him on a whole shot. Uh, she, Erica Enders with a 24 to Koretsky's 40. He outran her. He had a 661 with a three. She was a 662 with a six. But like I said, she yeah. got him on the whole shot. That's definitely unfortunate. Yeah, Kyle struggled a little bit on the, on the tree this year. And uh, I think he's got two whole shot loss finals. So, uh, but he'll he'll get it together. The old uh, Nitro Fish, Lucas Oil, Camaro, being a winner circle this year. No doubt, no doubt. All right, moving on to Pro Stock Bike, Eddie Craywick on the Buell over Angel Sampe and the Suzuki. Oh, uh, Angel made it to the final, huh? Yep. I kind of zoned out there. I'm sorry. There was some something going on behind me here. So, Angel, uh, Angel run it up. Eddie Craywick on the Buell, 684 with a four to take out Angel Sampe on the Suzuki, a 688 flat. So, yeah, that was, you know, so the, the, landscape of, the landscape of Pro Stock Motorcycle, right? Craywick and Angel were partners or teammates on Harley. The Harleys last year. Yeah. She's, on fuel and she's on a Suzuki. It's like, man, if you blink your eye, everything changes in Pro Stock Motorcycle. 
Yeah, and she's on, I'm pretty sure she's on the new four valve Suzuki deal that they are really the only ones that have figured it out, I think, so far. Uh, but uh, yeah, good to see Eddie back. Uh, you know, he's running all year, but they've, they've kind of struggled this year a little bit. Um, but they've got a fast bike. Andrew's struggled. Uh, I think everybody was, was uh, in all the pro pits this, this, at Indy was, was kind of scratching their heads because they only got one session. There's a lot of a lot of people that didn't did get in. Unfortunately, Mike Salinas did get in top fuel. You know, there's a good number of people who didn't take advantage of that first session because uh, the last two got rained out. And I think right. we saw hurt a lot of people in pro stock motorcycle also. But uh, congrats to Eddie Craywick. Division One's Eddie Craywick. That's right. English Town's Eddie Craywick. That's it. All right, moving on to top alcohol dragster eight. First time U.S. Nationals winner, a member of NHRA Division One, our very own Jackie Frick defeated Matthew Cummings. Uh, Jackie ran a 516 with a four to uh, Matthew Cummings 539 with a six. Cummings had the advantage on the line, but uh, Jackie caught up to him by about 200 feet out, never trailed for the win. Again, she takes home her first Wally this season, fifth of her career, and her first ever Indy win. Yeah, how how about Jackie? I talked to Jackie a little bit today, and uh, she's she said she's just on cloud nine for you know her first U.S. Nationals win. And again, Jackie's one of those old bracket racers too. You know, used to run a lot of top tracks for Super Comp yeah. Bracket Racing at Echo. Uh, Still does. She, yeah, exactly. She has a, a a huge family lineage in in, in Division One racing in the northeast but uh she's got a good car the the, the think uh organization is is huge uh but matthew cummins i mean hats off to him and that whole team that team has that car has won two nationalists this year with with uh uh oh and i believe i, I drew a blank there uh, richmond phillips <laughs> get in the, in the car at atlanta and even in uh brainer i believe they won that and uh I mean, that car, whoever gets in, it goes to the finals. I'm pretty sure it's been in five finals this year. Uh, so, you know, good for them to uh, get the Indy runner up. And actually, uh, Jackie, uh, she's coming off back-to-back -back wins. She won the uh, Rain Makeup Maple Grove. Uh, not, okay. only, not only did she win that race, but uh, her niece her won in Super Street. Uh, so they got to celebrate the winter circle together. Then yep. she goes off to Indy. She wins Indy, and Taylor gets engaged to Vincent Nobile. So uh, that's uh, one big happy family for the last uh, week and a half, two weeks. Congrats to all of them. Well deserved. And I, I'd have to double check, but I believe she's in the finals for whenever they make up the New England um, rain out as well for top. I think so. Yeah, I think so. I think she is. Yeah. Wow. Yep. Nice. And then, nice. And then uh, to, to top it all off, then they get to kind of go home to uh, Maple Grove this week. So that, you know, it's kind of pretty exciting to have all that going on and then go to your home track. And, uh, right. So, right. So, so they'll do well there. All right. Top alcohol funny card. Doug Gordon defeated Shane Westerfield. Uh, Westerfield went two thou red. Uh, on the tree, gave the red with the red light, gave Gordon the win. Gordon wins his third Wally and 14th of his career. Westerfield with his quickest pass of the weekend in the losing effort. So, I got nothing. <laughs> Doug Gordon uh, has just been the last two or three years has just been tearing the alcohol funny car field to pieces. I mean, you know, he's got a very much publicized crew which is consists of his daughters his high school age daughters that do the clutch that you know drop pistons in uh and you know those those two girls are crushing the entire alcohol flooded car single-handedly uh you know shane westerfield i believe that is uh tony barton's car uh you know he's he's uh that's a very good car also um i think he went red in the final i think yeah two thousand red two thousand yeah, but uh, Dor Doug, uh, Doug has just been on tear, you know, two-time world champion. I believe he took the championship from Westerfield, I believe, or maybe he took it from Sean Bellamer. But, uh, yeah, Doug's, uh, Doug's, Doug's on a tear. I think Doug's, Doug right now is making the trek out to Phoenix from Indy, so they're going to be tired 
tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, comp eliminator, Jim Greenheck defeated uh, then HRA division one comp professor for lack of a better term, Frank Aragona, uh, 750 to uh, Frank 746, but Frank was uncharacteristically late on the tree. Chris, you're doing so well talking about comp. You should go ahead and talk, talk about the indexes. And oh God, he's Chris is going to do his thing again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on. Superstar. Definitely <laughs> <laughs> see Jim Jim Greenheck get away. He owns the uh, the cabinet company. The the C C net. Yeah. Yes, he took them. <laughs> yeah. uh, sponsors of uh, the Hull Brothers and Alcohol Funny Car. And uh, I, I think that was his first national event in Atlanta. So, when it ended, he's pretty cool. So, that's up to him. And uh, Division One, there we go. Second. Okay. Second. So, yeah. But we're going to get Chris on a comp car one of these days. We'll make Chris a comp crew chief. How about that, Pete? I, gonna have I, to love, I love comp. I love everything about comp. I love the diversity. I like everything about comp, but that index just makes me my head want to go. We got to do a Wednesday night show where Chris just talks about comp. Yeah, we'll have Richie Prizer on. He can talk about. Yeah, there you go. I'll get about. I'll be even more confused than I already am. Some really comp guys to come on. We just talk comp for for about. Oh, which is great, but don't talk about the index because. All right, moving on. Enough of beating me up about comp index stroke issues. Super stock, Matt Morris and Chevy Cavalier took out Gary Edmonds in his Chevy Camaro. Morris wins his first national event, Wally, in his second final round. Uh, Morris drilled him on the tree, 008 to Edmonds, 59 light for the win. Yeah, it was good to see Matt Morris get a first win. And like we talked about before, to win Indy, you got to go through some tough ones. He went through Justin Lamb, J. Rod Grenier, Marty Reinhardt. I mean, you know, the list goes on. So, uh, and then I mean, the Emmons, the Emmons boys. I mean, it doesn't get any tougher than those guys in Superstock. They they won stock in Superstock here last year, or won Superstock in Indy last year. So, uh, you know, be right back in the finals. Uh, that's saying something for Matt Moore. So, you got to stand. All right, Stock Eliminator, and again a Division One. Um, Matt Lisa defeated a fellow Division One racer, Todd Hoven. Um, it was a battle for the D1 title. Uh, double breakout, and Lisa brings it home. Lisa with the starting line advantage and the win. And he also wins his first national event, Wally, and who, again, in his first final round. Another note before you guys talk about that, Matt was also the D1 rep for the Jags All-Stars. That's... Uh... It seems like you're saying a lot of first time winners at Indy, uh, which is great to see. I mean, if, you know, you want to see turnover and you want to see people knock it down for the first time all the time. Uh, had to make for if you were spectating at Indy and you were paying attention, it had to make for some pretty good racing to watch. Yeah, for sure. You know, it, it goes against what I said last year when I lost. I said nobody can get their first win in Indy. It's just like I, it, you know, I, I felt. Like, no, I honestly felt like it just wasn't meant to be because it's like, how do you, you can't go there when you're that? You can, that can't be your first race win. But right. obviously, this year they're 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 proving that that theory yeah. wrong. But, yeah. Uh, I you know, Keister knows a lot a little bit about this stuff. I, I'm pretty sure the car that Matt Morris is driving. Uh, or I'm sorry, not Matt, Matt Morris, Matt Lisa, uh, is the former Slick 50 Camaro that Scotty Richardson drove a long time ago to about 155 national event wins. That car was around for a long time. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's it. Uh, I think uh, Santo Volpe drove it for a while. It was uh, Rick Braun. Like, that car's been around a long time. It's if that's the car, that car has a huge, huge lineage in NHR. Like it should be in a, in a museum somewhere. Uh, right. I'm not, if anybody in the comments can uh, confirm that or not, but I think that's the car. So it's watch. not the first trip down the Indy track that it's at. Is what you're saying? No, I'm pretty sure. It's, uh, 
<laughs> Scotty's won Indy in that car before too. So it 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 knew where to go after Matt made the turnoff down there. <laughs> it knew where yeah. to go. All right, top sportsman presented by Vortex Superchargers, Jimmy Lewis in a Pontiac GXP defeated Alan Firestone in a Chevy Camaro. Uh, Lewis with a tick of an advantage on the tree, runs dead on with a six for the win. Uh, his 12th national event, Wally, in the second this year. Yeah, Jimmy Lewis is a former super gas champion. Uh, and I'm pretty sure he's, a, he's an airplane mechanic. He fixes the airplane motors. So he knows how to make power, but uh, and he's also no stranger to, to the Lunar Circle. Um, and Alan Firestone had, I think Alan's got one of the 900 inch non nitrous motors in Top Sportsman that's uh, pretty quick. Uh, it was an interesting show in, in Top Sportsman. Uh, Glenn Butcher with a 959 on with like three stages went 610 dead on like twice during, during eliminations. Wow. Yeah, which is phenomenal. <laughs> so, uh, for, those, for those of you don't, that don't know, 610 is the cutoff. Uh, yeah. If you go 609 with a nine, you get thrown. You're done. Yeah, I'm pretty sure first round he went dead on, and then I think he lost in the semis to Jimmy Lewis and went dead on again, uh, 610 on the 610. Yeah, so that's that's pretty impressive. And uh, I think uh, Jimmy also took out the coal train, Lonnie Johnson, the twin turbo Corvette. Uh, who's always a tear in, in top sports with really fast cars, uh, another six, 16 car, 230 mile an hour. Is so, that the white Corvette that had a little incident? Yeah, yeah, that's it. All right, top tracks. Oh, go ahead, Pete, sorry. I was gonna say bracket racing on steroids. Absolutely, it's awesome. A lot of steroids. Yeah. Yep. Top dragster again presented by Vortex Superchargers. Zach Saxman, 6'11 with a four to take out Bradley Johnson with a 6'11 with a three. Saxman wow. with a great light in the win, wins the second national event. Wally in the sh shocker of the weekend, though. Anthony Bertazzi got taken out first round in top dragster. Yeah, I believe Anthony lost first round in Superstock and top dragster. And uh, the interesting circle of life, Bradley Johnson, the runner-up in Top Dragster, lost the world championship to Bertozzi by one round last year. And uh, so I know he was happy to go to the finals and see Bertozzi got, because I'm pretty sure they're, him and Danny Nelson, all those guys are in another uh, fight for the championship this year. Uh, Zach Sackman, an interesting story about him, his brother, Matt Sackman, Zach Zachman is the crew guy on Antron Brown's stuff fuel car and has actually made some runs in Antron's car uh, to get licensed in top fuel. And uh, Zachman had to go to, I keep saying Zachman, <laughs> Sackman had to go through some tough guys, Division 7s like Mendenhall and Phil Dion, uh, Danny Nelson, obviously. Danny, I couldn't believe Danny Nelson lost first round also, uh, and uh, Patrick Forster. So he had to go through a, a huge list of uh, big names to win i could tell you that if my name was zach saxman i would want you to call me zaxman yeah. <laughs> it would be yeah. totally fine <laughs> yeah. that, is, that is definitely a time twister so yeah matt sackman is sackman gee i can forget it move on hey, anyway, guy. <laughs> just call him zach oh, yeah. <laughs> just zach Zach, yeah. we know who you're talking about by now. The, the top dragster killer, that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. The Z man. Yeah, the Z man. <laughs> Z -man. <laughs> all right. Uh, top fuel hard. If, if he races at Z Max, you're going to be all screwed up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, all right. Top, top fuel Harley. Ryan Peary over Tyler Wilson. Uh, you know, Top fuel Harley, you gotta have that big yeah. man. So if is, you're, that's about if all you're I can say with, about top fuel Harley. <laughs> if I, you're I friends know. with me on Facebook, yeah, uh, and that's what I'm about. <laughs> <laughs> he he had a pretty interesting quote on Facebook about Nitro Harley. I don't know if, it, if it's family friendly or not, but uh, so I I said before we aired that I didn't watch any cars go down the track for Indy. I actually lied. 
uh, because the reason why I made that post is because uh, a former guest and friend of the show, Joe Costello, uh, he was announcing and he made the comment that they make a thousand horsepower and they weigh a thousand pounds. And I sat there and I looked at my computer monitor and I'm like, two cylinders makes 200 more horsepower than my eight cylinders do, right? <laughs> and it weighs a third of what my car weighs. Yeah. And all I could think to myself is, how big a balls do you have to have to ride that thing? Oh, no, no, wait. You can't sit on it until we start it. What? Yeah, because, because it will kill you. <laughs> Oh my God. You, you can't sit on it because it'll kill you if it blows up. Right. Because if it lets go, it's going to blow you into the grandstands. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Unbelievable. That is definitely one of the most interesting categories in all of drag racing. And there's only a handful of them in the country because there's only a handful of people that are cojoned enough to be able to, to crack the throttle on yep. one, to actually chicken wing it, you know? So, yeah. Yeah, it's so, but uh, and this guy is not one of them. I'll tell you. That. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I need uh, I need more than than uh, some cowhide. I need a uh, roll cage and seat belts. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, don't they have to wear like a half inch thick iron plate essentially on their chest? They pretty much essentially wear a Kevlar vest, a bulletproof vest. Bulletproof uh, vest. Yeah. yeah, just in case the parts and pieces decide to exit the engine while it's uh, running, they don't uh, die. That's pretty much it. Yeah. But they are, they are, I can tell you, they're a tough group of people. We were at, I was at Memphis a few years back and watched them, the Nitro Harleys run, and the guy went down and went through like 660, 200 and something. And he rolled and slid and rolled and just, I mean, we're just like, oh God. And we, I was one of the first people there. And, like, dude, you all right? He's like, yeah, I'm fine. It's all good. And his leather's ripped open, and it's like, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> Are you serious? I'm <laughs> yeah. I fell on the steps at my house the other day, and I, I thought I needed to be airlifted out. What are you like? What? You're you're fine. But, okay. I stubbed my toe. Oh my god, it hurt. <laughs> I thought I was gonna I die. Toe. I stubbed my toe. <laughs> butter on. And I, I, they landed two helicopters, and I had an eight-hour surgery. Like, like, this, this guy does hey, a triple Indy off the back of a highway, and it's no big deal. At two hundred, he's like, "Yeah, what right? I go? What'd you go? You need to go to the insane asylum." Where you... Yeah, yeah. what well, you need to go to the psychiatrist is what you need. <laughs> but they are, they are oh, cool. Great bunch of guys uh you know jay turner the bulldog and uh, uh i think the vance and heinz team had a bike out there i think they they finally gave up that deal but yeah that's it's if you ever get a chance to go watch them go watch them because they're uh, and i don't think there's any like i could be wrong but i think they're a bunch of older gentlemen <laughs> the best way i could put it i don't think they're the there's any new people getting on harley nitro harley's nowadays so you might want to watch it while you have already been rattled loose so it doesn't matter <laughs> <laughs> I don't see any any eighteen year old kids jumping to get on Nitro Harley nowadays. But now, what do I know? But all I got to say, all I got to say. That's exactly how it sounded when I when I stumped my toe and piece motor home. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, God. next batter up. Pro modified teammates Jeffrey Parker takes out Stevie Fast uh, Jackson with the starting line advantage, but Parker chased him down at about a thousand feet to take the win. Barker wins his first career Wally. Barker is the absolute goat of top sportsmen. So very first top sportsman world champion, backed it up with the second world championship in top top sportsman. Uh, moved into Pro Mod a couple of years ago. Struggled a little bit, but they've uh, they they found their groove with that Toyota. And it, uh, I mean, to take out Stevie Fast in the final. I mean, they're, they're teammates, but still to beat him anywhere, anytime, you you gotta you gotta be on your A game. So uh, Jeffrey Barker, uh, good to, good to see him get his first win and at Indy. Well, the first time winner at Indy. 
All right, well, factories. Like, I'm sorry. That was the first time in that class. He's got national event wins, but first time in this class. So first time maybe, Pravod. maybe not a first time winner. All right. Factory stock showdown. Jesse Alexander and the Chevy Camaro defeated Aaron Stanfield in a Chevy Camaro. Uh, Alexander had the starting line advantage. It takes the win. He wins his first national event Wally in his first final round. Uh, Stanfield spun the tires hard right at the hit and uh, took, he was in the right hand lane. <laughs> well, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to say about that other than, uh, you know, that was one of, of a few. But Jesse Alexander had a great car. I mean, he, in eliminations, I think he went, he went, what, 87, 82, 82, 85, 85. You know, I mean, the thing was on a rail. It was a bracket car. Uh, I think he went for 92, but he went 84 in the final. Uh, so that Stanford would have would have had a tough, tough run there anyway. I think they knew it and kind of uh, – tune the car up a little bit more but uh you know the big question about uh factory stock is when are the fords going to come back uh the fords haven't haven't run a factory stock race this year it's been just dodges and camaros and uh you know some say it's because they've been running in an mra and the rules are a bit different but uh we need to figure out how to get the fords back you know Obviously, me and Pete are not Ford guys, but you know we need all the diversity we can in in, in here. And yeah, not yeah. Sure. It's an issue. Uh, we need the big three to battle it out because that's what's best for the sport. Um, what I love to see a Chevy win, absolutely a Chevy guy. Uh, but we need what's best for the sport, and that's to have all three competing. Yeah. yeah, I know there was some controversy on. Saturday, I think I sent that to you, Pete. Yep. And um, I won't get into it now, but I reached out to the person and they said they've already said too much and it's already created a rather big mess and didn't really want to talk about it anymore. So I respected that and that was fine. Um, the person was a Ford um, racer. So. Well, well. Dun, 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 some more. Yeah. That's cool though, but yeah. But what a, what a great 67. Hi. <laughs> right on cue, Chris. <laughs> Is Keister still watching? No, no he hasn't asleep. responded. No. I think you heard his feeling about. I must have. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Almost almost there, gentlemen. Almost there. Hemi Challenge. Uh, dominant performance that included a blistering 836 with a 418 in the final round. Division One's Steve Camella earned his first victory in the Dodge Hemi Challenge field in a race held on Friday during the U.S. Nationals at Lucas Oil Raceway Park. See, I got it right that time. Uh, Camella drove his vintage 68 Barracuda to a final win, uh, final round win, excuse me, against Jimmy Daniels, who we all know is the hot shoe in um, the Hemi Challenge the last few years. Uh, Jimmy was going for his fifth Hemi Challenge victory in six years, actually. Uh, Camella, two-time finalist in traditional NHRA Superstock competition and runner-up in last year's Hemi Challenge said so far this is the highlight of his career yeah camilla you know the, the, they've been on a tear the last last years as far as finding power you know they're one of the teams a few years back that switched to a clutch car uh, but the other special thing about camilla you know it's it's no secret that most of the hemi guys don't pay much attention to the actual uh race you know the, the eliminator they go to try and wing class. Camella is a guy that he's, he could be there deep on Sunday, you know, has, has, I think he's, you know, won a division championship and he wants super stock with a Hemi car, you know? Um, so, you know, hats off to him for winning that and, you know, being one of those guys that that's, you know, that can turn the wind light on in, 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 in the, the actual limit. Absolutely. All right. The bitter end is coming up. Jags all stars. I'm going to start it out with the final division standings. Division two, 1100. Division one, 
tied with Division Four at 900 points. Division Three, 800. Division Seven, Jaron's home division. That in Division 842. Uh, mm-hmm. Division Seven, 600. Division Five, 500. Division Six, 400. So, for the eighth time, the Southeast Division team celebrated an overall team title at the Jags All Stars held this weekend um, at the U.S. Nationals. Uh, they rode a hot streak with wins and th- with from three of their team members. The squad from the Southeast Division, Division Two, claimed the overall team title at the All-Star Race. Uh, North Central Region also had reason to celebrate after winning Top Alcohol Dragster and Top Alcohol Funny Car portion. Uh, Division One in South Central Division Four finished in second with 900. While well, the team from I already did that. Never mind. Let's see, Division Two banked wins from Ray Miller III in Supercomp, Rusty Cook in Supergas, Jacob Rutledge in Super Street to claim the title, which was not decided until the final rounds of the event. Wow, so so Division Two swept the 90 classes, huh? Yep. Wow. Yeah, that's, that was pretty impressive. But they had... Right. Big hitters in the in those dot ninety classes. Absolutely. Well, yeah. Again, if you've even remotely paid attention, you know all three of those. Yeah, sure. Uh, in comp, Doug Engels claimed victory over Craig Bourgeois, Bourgeois uh, to lift off the throttle in his front engine. A nostalgia, a nostalgia dragster uh, racing against the seven eighty nine index. Oh, here we go. Angle drove to a 736 to seal the victory. Moving on. <laughs> uh, reigning NHRA Superstock World Champ Brian Warner drove to a win in Superstock for the Division One team after Division Seven Brian Broussard red lit uh, by Chuthau. A red light also decided the stock final where Division Three's Randy Lynn Ship left a fraction of a second too soon, allowing Division Four ace Jerry Emmons to drive to the title. Emmons drove his Lucas Oil Camaro to a 10.27 on his 10.30 dial. Uh, let's see, Al Kenny took the winner's circle in top dragster presented by Vortex Superchargers. Uh, drove to a narrow win over D3's Al Peebler. Both drivers posted a 610 dial, and Kenny won on a whole shot 611 with an eight to 611 with a two. Top Sportsman again presented by Vortex Superchargers. Division six, Robert Strom celebrated the win with a 744 with a five on a 740 dial after D4's Bob Galidi got loose and had to lift before the finish. Julie Natas racing for the North the Central right Region. Line. What? In the right hand lane. <laughs> Probably. That gonna make me screw up. I forgot where I was. <laughs> Gee, that's oh, there tough. we go, right there. Julie. <laughs> Julie the Norwegian bombshell, Julie Natas, racing for the North Central Region, interestingly enough. Earned the title in top alcohol dragster with a strong performance in her Randy Meyer racing entry. Natas got a single run in the final after opponent James Stevens broke. Uh, Natas defeated Aaron Cooper and defending all-star champ Jackie Frick to reach the final. West Central, uh, excuse me, West Region also got a chance to celebrate after Brian, Ho- is it Ho or Ho? Ho. Ho? Stop Central Region racer. Kyle Smith and Top Alcohol Funny Car. How drove to a 549 with a nine to edge. Smith's 555 with a four. All the winners of the Jags All Star share a prize pool of about $150,000 with a $20,000 bonus split among members of the winning team. So, pretty cool payday for a lot of people this weekend. Yeah, the Jags All Stars. For me, I'm, I'm sure I can speak for Pete too to say that's it'd be a dream just to make the Jake's All Stars team, um, so to go and win it and then do it now at Indy. You know, it was normally a 
uh, Chicago. But now it makes it even more special. You know, uh, I don't think there's a, you know, for a sports racer, there's there's nothing better. I think, you know, I, I think that may be uh, part of the, the question, would you rather win Indy, a division championship or the Jags All-Stars? Yeah, right. <laughs> I think uh, the Jags All Stars ranks right up there with the uh, you know, national team. So uh, if, if, if they're not tied, it's definitely close second. So uh, you know, it's so tough to to, to even qualify. And uh, if that guy's qualified multiple times, guys waiting for Jags All Stars multiple times, they're on a list just you know all by themselves there. But, uh, I would be happy if I could just steal someone's sticker off the side of their trailer without beating me up. <laughs> yeah I actually have one of those stickers I didn't get it myself but I, I have one of those stickers <laughs> he stole it uh, no my uh, my team owner doesn't want it on the side of his trailer <laughs> <No>, we... <laughs> our teammate uh, made it actually won the Jacks All-Stars last year Tom Traxer, Cody Weber. Uh, so I got one of his stickers hanging on the wall yeah, one day I'll tell my great, 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 great grandkids that it's mine. That yeah, be, yeah. Won't, there won't be any like immediate like hovering internet to say, "Hey, did he win a Jack Stars?" <laughs> no, All right. sorry. Go back and check the video. Yeah. Definitely. What year did Uncle Jaron win the All Stars? And it replies with a smiling face emoji. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It says, "Yeah, right." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, that that is all the, that's all the results from the U.S. Nationals. Uh, Maple Grove is next weekend, the national event at Maple Grove. Um, don't bother trying to call the office because nobody there will answer. They said uh, try to get them by email or Facebook. Um, so. Well, uh, we also, we'll also have the yellow bullet wrap up next week uh, because they actually didn't by the time we aired tonight, due to weather and stuff, it got delayed. So uh, we'll have Yellow Bullet wrap up. We'll have the No Time, No Rules race wrap up from Lebanon Valley, Maple Grove. And do we have a guest for next week? Um, I have a couple. I, I did get a You kind of put me on the spot there, Pete. Uh, I'll just add by saying we'll have the results of the Lucas Oil. Double division in Phoenix, and then pass the mic over to Chris. And we'll also we'll hit the points for uh, the Lucas Oil Dragons in series. I wanted to do that tonight, and then I realized it wasn't a reality because of all the results we had to go through. Um, but we'll do all the points for Division One, and we'll do all the national um, Lucas Oil Dragons in series points next week. And Jerron will just let me know. Yeah, we're good. Also, I'd like to let everybody know if they want to talk about or listen to me talk about the indie sportsman experience a little bit more. Tomorrow night, I believe at 6, I don't know what time it is. Uh, hang on. Gonna, yeah, I believe it's going to be 7 p.m. Eastern. I'll be on American Hot Rod television uh, on YouTube. So I'll, uh, I'll give you guys a link uh, later on. See if you can put a link up on our page too. Okay, we'll do that. We'll link up. We're gonna have pretty much video of the finals of every class and some highlights during the during the race and like that. So it'll be pretty interesting. Cool. So well, have fun. Yeah, have yep. fun cheating on us, Jaron. Thanks. That's all right. Pete did it first. That's all right. I can. Right. I, 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 I got broad shoulders. I can take it. And I, I told them that I would do that. I, I had to do this one first because this is this is this is home for me. Even though oh, I, there we go. Uh, I get treated like the black haired stepchild, but it's okay. Royalty. Um, uh, Comp yeah. want to be royalty. Pete get treated like the no haired stepchild, but you know it's okay. That's right. <laughs> Have you seen this? I, well, yeah, but you're up you're here catching up. up. You're catching up, but that's all right. I'm trying to catch up too, but we can't talk too bad about you. You're our fearless leader, so you know, yeah. 
Oh, believe me, you can. I've had it happen many times. <laughs> just, just so you know, I got the Zoom meeting code, so I could start one too. It don't matter. <laughs> so, Pete, let me ask you a question before we go. Uh, what's your? You're not going right, right to Maple Grove because of school, but um, when are we going to see you back in the old Super Vega? You're not. I'm done for the year. Really? Okay. Wow. I am actually, um, this will probably make both of you guys laugh, but uh, I've got another hobby. Uh, I race, I drag race RC cars. So I'll be doing that for the rest of the year. Uh, just strictly because I don't have any time to go racing uh, the big car. But I will be at Scott's race next weekend. I'm in charge of chip draw and pairing up cars in the lanes uh, so that they could run for the no rules, no time race. Uh, and then that's it. Play with a little remote control cars, do some house projects and bring on 2022. How was your first week back at school? Very good. Uh, it was great to have all the kids back. Um, felt just like old times. So it was good to uh, good to see all the faces again even though cool. half of them covered up, but it was good. Awesome. Well, that's, 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 that's good to hear. Uh, Chris Lodge tried to let you off the hook. I'm not RC car racing. Oh, I could totally be down for that. It's pretty cool. I didn't say it wasn't cool. video. I didn't say it wasn't and, cool. And just so you know, they're one-tenth scale cars. And they run 132 feet with great prep. Now, are you running prep or no prep? <laughs> He's trying to 102, 110. He's unlacing his shoes to try to do some counting. <laughs> uh, what are you, what's your six foot? <laughs> your six uh, believe me, we, we don't have, it's not quite that sophisticated. <laughs> That, that was a pretty good one, there, Chris. What's your six foot? I like that. I like that. There are there any so, so far? I'm in a uh, they call it a thirteen five class, uh, which is the size of the motor that you're allowed to run. Um, no wheelie bars, and it's got to be a full body. It can't be all cut out in the back. And I actually went up there second time ever and set a new track record with the car. So that's, that's pretty, pretty cool. cool. That's pretty impressive. I yeah. like it. It was pretty cool. I went uh, 258 at 54. Wow. wow. So one on scale, so it's like I went 540 miles an hour. So it's pretty good pass. <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, being, being that I'm a custom painter and airbrusher and all that, you know, those bodies, I've seen some pretty nice paint jobs on those bodies. And i just like to let you know to tell most of the guys that you race with not to call me because I don't want to paint any of them. You know, you would think a, a good friend, like like twin brother, like you are to me, you'd say, hey, Pete, send me a body so I could put a killer paint job on it. But that's OK. I'll just keep doing it with my little roller and my brush and we'll handle it. I'll, I'll tell you what, only if you send me a Vega wagon, buddy. Oh, gosh. How well, do you I'm, not, just, I'm, I'm just waiting for Pete to do the hydro dipping on my plastic pieces for my mobility scooter so I can see how those look. It'll be interesting. Hmm. So look, 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 look at the look yeah. on his face. He's I, his, his gears are turning. Yeah, they were there. <laughs> I didn't think you guys noticed that. I'm like, huh? <laughs> what, the, what what body do you run, Pete? Uh, right now, believe it or not, it's a Cadillac uh, CTSV. You're a high rent. Uh, I am on a waiting list for a Vega body. And the person that's making the Vega body says his next project is going to be a Vega wagon. So be careful what you say because okay. you might have a body show up in the mail. <laughs> not a problem. I got you. I got you. But he needs a like three day turnaround, though. That's not going to happen. I know better. <laughs> uh, my car will be jet powered before I get it back. <laughs> oh boy! I know. I you know everybody makes all these 
statements about, oh, you yeah, you ever get the car back. And I know the people that look at all the cars that I do are like, if he's so slow, how come he puts on a car every friggin' week? It's because you just wait for someone to threaten to break your legs, then that's the next person in line. <laughs> I know. I do chassis work the same way. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see, who can inflict the most pain on me this week? Okay, your car's getting done. <laughs> I may, may not have had a couple hundred death threats, but that's not, <laughs> nor here, there. whatever. That's, that just makes you feel wanted. Exactly, that's it. Warm and fuzzy inside. That's right. Well, I, All right, uh, guys. I got to work tomorrow. 4.30 comes quick. I'm leaving you. All right, yeah, well, I, Wednesday morning, I got to get up early, too. Right, I'm yeah, feeling 10, 11 o'clock. No, yeah. no, I have to fly out to Phoenix. So, so uh -huh. I got to get up at like four in the morning. That's, that's terrible. A little difference between waking up early to go racing or waking up early to go to work. No, they both suck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, so, have a great week. week. I'll all talk right. to you all soon. We'll see you. All see right, you guys. Have a good week, guys. Have a good one. All right, again, the, the uh, national event this coming weekend at Maple Grove. If you're going and you're racing, best of luck. If you're going and watching, enjoy. Have a good time. We will be back next Monday night at 7 o'clock Eastern time. Have a great night, everybody. Stay safe. We are out of here.